Uh, but yeah, today I'm here to talk about SRT. Now, it's encrypted, it's low latency, and it runs across the public internet. So uh, the um, encryption is the secure part of it, and the reliability is built into the protocol. It always amuses me to think that the DVB and uh, World Wide Web are approximately the same age, give or take a year or two. Uh, but they, they diverged fairly early on, or they never came together, simply because at the time, the web had, uh, was a different beast from what it is today. So uh, when DVB started up, the big advantage that it had was that it was moving into analog bandwidth, and it could use it more efficiently. So suddenly you could put four, eight, channels where one single analog channel had sat before. So uh, bandwidth was no, not a problem in the early days of DVB. Whereas at the beginning of the World Wide Web, for those of us who are old enough to remember that stuff, you had things like dial-up and AOL and all sorts of other stuff. Um, and essentially you, had to, you were uh, looking at perhaps uh, terms of kilobits of your initial uh, internet connection or inter web connection, not nearly enough for any, any serious broadcast quality video, not really enough for any kind of video at all. But uh, along came real video, QuickTime, AVI, these things. That I always say gave you a playing card sized picture with postage stamp sized pixels on it. Uh, not, nothing that you could put on television. Uh, broadband when that started to come through at the end of the 90s, uh, started making it look better, but there, it still wasn't right. Uh, short answer is that web protocols weren't working. As time went on, DVB settled into a, a situation where it was being distributed either over satellite or via leased lines using private uh, WLANs uh, or proprietary uh, um, solutions. Satellite is a second and a half return trip, so latency is always a role there. The latency is far less with a leased line, but it's still not very straightforward. It's expensive, and you're usually working with a, prior, uh, with a proprietary solution. Uh, UDP worked okay uh, on uh, leased lines, but over internet, with uh, all the noise and chatter and everything going on, it didn't work so well either. Uh, UDT was um, a big step forward at the beginning of the Orties, where some clever chaps in Chicago started throwing terabytes of data across transatlantic lines, I believe there's a um, between Chicago and Amsterdam. But that was a file transfer setup. And streams aren't files. But it got people thinking. Um, so what have been the constraints then for um, television over internet. The constraints are, have been bandwidth, latency, security, because it's up there, then someone's going to try and steal it off you. Um, things like SDI. SDI is a, an short for SDI must die, which is to say entrenched attitudes in a traditionally conservative broadcast environment. And incumbency, which is another thing that we've, we've had to deal with a lot, um, where people say, well, it's worked so well for me. Why would I need to upgrade it? Um, uh, still, so these were the things that, that, uh, that basically were getting in the way of uh, broadcast over the internet. However, a lot of things have changed in the 25 years. Uh, we've seen the complete, practically the complete death of analog television. Uh, we've seen more and cheaper broadband. We've seen the aforementioned UDT, uh, research on high-speed file transfer. Uh, we've seen the convergence movement, where suddenly people are watching television on their phones. I can remember people saying a dozen years ago, no one's going to watch television on their phone. Well, that turned out to be wrong. And the smartphone, which is not a smartphone, it's a pocket terminal. And all of a sudden, there are all these things that you can do with your phone, um, including consume media. And from initial skepticism, that has actually turned into a thriving industry. So the world of now is a lot different from when DVB and the web started up together. So that's culminated into SRT. For a long time, we, we've been getting calls from people. They say, yes, we'd like your multi-viewer to show RTMP. 
and we say back to them, our multiview will never show RTMP. Uh, streaming is streaming, and broadcast is broadcast, and never the twain. Um, so, uh, nonetheless, the streaming, the world has developed, um, and it provides a service, but streaming is not broadcast. It's adjunct to broadcast. Um, there have been uh, 20 years of development in networking since the, um, uh, uh, since, since, uh, um, the start of the DVB web situation. Um, and this has given the possibility for RTP meets UDT. UDT was a file transfer system, but it had some clever tricks for uh, moving large amounts of data very quickly. And um, combined with packet, the, the sort of, uh, RTP tech, uh, technology, um, it gave the possibility to do something um, with, which was both secure and performant. Um, and it's been building now for five or six years. It started in 2013 uh, when the SRT Alliance came up. It's the sort of thing that we were interested in, so we got involved. Um, and as I say here, Synergy SRT hit the ground running at IBC 2018, where we were running around with our phones, uh, broadcasting to our stand monitors uh, and having a whale of a time. Um, but it really, really all came together this last NAB. At this last NAB, we had so much raging interest um, that, in fact, as, as Lewis said, it, it was inspired him. Uh, the, the sort of responses that we were getting uh, to move, push forward, and uh, really get everything SRT into Synergy products as soon as possible. So at NAB, we were showing our play out from Nuremberg uh, in uh, Las Vegas, an HD play out on the phone. Um, and it just, there was tremendous interest because so many people, particularly smaller broadcasters, are looking to get the maximum from their system. They want the maximum flexibility, and SRT offers that. So that brought up the, uh, sped up the Synergy implementation, uh, and off we went. So what is SRT about? First off, low-cost signal distribution. Uh, David's been telling us earlier about uh, what it does cost to, uh, to move signals around. Um, but if you've got public internet, plug it into one socket and take it out of the other one, and all you're paying as a service provider, that's low-cost distribution right there. Uh, it's point-to-point -point secured, so when it's up there, if people aren't going to be able to sniff it, um, it will connect securely, hence secure. Um, for virtual and cloud playout, it's a godsend. Cloud playout is, um, is a situation where a lot of people have been asking about it, but there always had to be something in between uh, to make sure that the TV signal ended up where it was supposed to go. With SRT, um, if you're running Synergy Air from a cloud instance, you can deliver that signal out of the cloud to wherever um, just simply by configuring it, in the en configuring it in the engine. No more middleware, no more brokering. Um, for things like contribution feeds, uh, our stunt with the cameras um, the, that we did at uh, IBC opens a scenario where we can feed SRT straight into our Synergy capture system, which means we can feed it straight into Synergy desktop, which means we can feed it straight into Synergy news. So we've got a possibility now of taking live camera pictures that be, can be turned into news content straight away or even fed in as live stream straight into a broadcast, if, if you're brave enough. Um, but certainly, contribution feeds are suddenly a lot easier than they used to be. And broadcast workflow and delivery chain optimization, there suddenly there are boxes in between that don't need to be there anymore. Um, Zixi has been mentioned as, as one particular example. Um, and Zixi will find other things to do, I'm sure, but there are a whole bunch of people now using Zixi that won't have to use it anymore because of SRT. So, uh, it's built into, or, it, well, it is built into, but not necessarily uh, for you guys yet, uh, into Air, Root, Capture, Live, and Multiviewer. Now, the, the advantages in Air seems to be reasonably straightforward. SRT and Synergy Root uh, is actually a fantastic combination because it means that you can combine your, if you are getting RTP inputs and SRT, and UDP all into a single browser, and you can place them wherever you like uh, throughout a Synergy workflow. 
obviously I've already mentioned the advantages of using Capture. Our Synergy Live product has been revivified by the fact that we can use SRT in it. Um, and indeed, we're using it for this right now. Um, and it's, uh, it means that that particular tool uh, has got a new lease of life. And we look forward to, to uh, a lot more people picking up on it. And MultiViewer. MultiViewer will take SRT in. MultiViewer will put SRT out. I've often explained to people the advantages of the Synergy software MultiViewer being... Uh, well, I don't need to tell you guys, do I? You've got one. But uh, the big advantages of the Synergy uh, software MultiViewer are that it can output simultaneously to screens and to an RTP stream. So you can have the same MultiViewer throughout your premises, except now we can output SRT. You can have your MultiViewer at home. Uh, so... Um, this is the sort of thing that SRT is making possible. Um, some verbiage directly from High Vision that explains how, uh, something about how it works. So um, we ha you can set up as the caller, the listener, or as a rendezvous. If you set it up as a, it's, it, in our terms, uh, it's simply whichever uh, address you put into the SRT field. Yeah, and then there is. Uh, um, the rendezvous, um, which is basically a simultaneous connection. Um, and these are, these are all configurable, and it's part of... Uh, with bleh, Most applications will work with one of these three particular ways of working. Um, so, let's take a look. So what we're going to do, um, um, I, have, I have it configured on the system. Uh, we have uh, one air engine, which has um, an SRT input. Uh, and we have one air engine which has an RTP input and an SRT output. Uh, I have some SRT and RTP streams in root, um, and I have SRT in multi-viewer. So um, if you want to open up uh, the... Um, have a look at air engine one first and open the configurator. Oh, there, well, they, first of all, you can, here you can see uh, the playout dashboard showing the SRT stream uh, that is going into the air engine. This is our uh, classic Nuremberg snowboarders. Yeah. So, uh, so um, uh, the uh, top uh, stream is SD, uh, and the lower stream is 720p. So, if we look at the configuration of Engine Zero. Uh, and we go. For, I've set it up so that it's. Uh, so I'm not running off a playlist. I'm using it in encode mode, so the live signal just goes straight into the engine. So if we go, but go to playback and have a look at. Sorry, got playback. Go to RTP input. Um, here we can see uh, very straightforward. Simply enable the input and put in the SRT address, and that's it. The SRT address in this particular case is the IP address of our Nuremberg server. And uh, with, uh, with an appropriate port. Um, and uh, yeah, it's as straightforward as that. I set that as the input, I set it to encode mode, uh, and there you are. You, you have your SRT signal coming in, and it's in an air engine. If you want to put that out to uh, SDI, uh, then you can. So, for example, if you have to, to play out, you can send it as SRT, just use our encoder at the other end to, um, to turn it into um, SDI for play out. So that's at its simplest. And as you can see, I've not got anything else configured, simply using it as an encoder. These are, uh, this is a one-minute loop, and it's kind of ragged at the in and the out. So when you see the black frames, that's my crappy capping. It's not anything to do with our, uh, our software. So that's instance zero. If we look at instance one, uh, then uh, we have, this, for this one we have in the playback area, we should have the output configured. So... Here, the, um, we've set the output to uh, SRT, and if, uh, if we go to the change, that's it and go through. So in this particular case, now, this is the... Um, because it's going out, it's all zeros going out on the uh, interfaces, again, with a port. Um, if you're experimenting with this, if, you know, and, and please feel free to, here's what you do. It would, uh, Lewis pointed me to the how-to when I was getting, getting going. It's not... It doesn't jump out at you, SRT, in the configurator, unless you set it to unicast. If you set it to multicast, you'll only see RTP or... Uh, thank you. Yeah. You'll only see RTP or, or UDP. So set it to unicast first, um, and then 
go to SRT, and uh, then if you want to broadcast, just put all zeros in there, uh, set your port number, and uh, uh, that's it. So inputs and outputs in Synergy Air. Uh, next is to have a look is, what I say next, root. I think so, yeah. Yes. So um, we have uh, uh, Synergy root. Uh, everybody here seen Synergy root before? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, we have, what I've done here is I have uh, um, set up in uh, the physical sources, I have two setups. One of these is two um, uh, of minute loops of TSs that I've sent out as RTP streams um, to provide uh, RTP inputs as well. And then SRT streams are um, from uh, Nuremberg uh, and uh, from Bristol, um, based from those streams, from the input RTPs sometimes and sometimes from the uh, externals. If, uh, um, if Lou were to click on the Bristol SRT, then he would, uh, we would see, uh, again, we're looking at the, we're listening to uh, the network address um, as with the stream type as SRT, uh, and there it is. It's in the browser. You can, you can click on it and check the video, and uh, uh, yeah, there we are, the crying lady. Um, so yes, so there's our, our SRT stream. And the, we have all the tools of route available to us, uh, virtual destinations, the routing, um, everything. But we can choose between RTP and SRT inputs. And we can also use those ad, um, addresses in the other Synergy products uh, the way that you usually do out of the browser. Uh, and then I think the last thing we're going to look at very quickly is the... Multi-viewer. Um, and if I... There we go. So here we have um, the multi-viewer configured as follows. Um, the, the Nuremberg stream, again, SD stream. This is a, just an RTP stream for demonstration purposes. But since we have a gentleman from NHK, I thought it was good to have something like that. And then down here, we can see uh, the input... Uh, RTP stream uh, on the left and on the right we can see the output um, SRT and as you can see it's perhaps a second uh, of latency um, and it, not, given that I haven't even particularly we didn't particularly tune it in any way but um, so this is coming in as an RTP stream it's going out as an HEVC um, um, SRT stream and uh, uh, as you can see, no quality difference and time difference also. Um, well, that's slowly, it's a, she's a, she is a bit fuzzy, actually. Maybe I need to look at the bit rate on that. So, so there we have it. This is, um, in addition to this, of course, is the configuration for uh, the cloud that we've been working with throughout. Um, I got it to work in advance. Uh, I wasn't able to get it to work here but I'm not Lewis, and so it was, uh, uh, it's enough, I think, to know that, or to have seen, just by, from the phone, um, what we can do also by going out through Wowser, uh, how um, effectively we have an international broadcast, uh, just simply with, uh, uh, with basic software. And, uh, yeah. Um, this will be available, the products, it's already in, versions that are being tested right now. The first product that actually has it in is, um, this is Synergy Air 14, uh, which is RC1 as of today. So uh, um, I can see we're going to be seeing some downloads of this uh, fairly quickly. And uh, yes, over the summer then, it will come on through the other products, through the various upgrades. It is built into Synergy Route 15, uh, into MultiViewer 15, um, into 12.3 uh, of Capture? Uh, I don't know. Okay. It will possibly 14. Possibly 14, okay. But certainly, Route 15, Air 14, uh, MultiViewer 15, 
all have it already built, uh, built in. And as these come through, if you're on the beta program, you'll be able to grab the betas, uh, or the release candidates will be coming through. By IBC, they should all be out. So this is simply an extra tool for our loyal customers, old and new. Oh, oh we're already at it. Oh. This, is, this, was, this was me earlier, my wild eyebrows. Ah, yeah, hey. Yep. Yeah, no. So, yeah, so what we're seeing here is um, uh, the, the, the stuff that we were having such screaming fun with last, uh, last IBC, uh, which is a Larix broadcaster, um, it's, which is... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I've been a player. Yeah. Oh, you can broadcast with it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. We did this originally with Larix Broadcaster, but I have been surpassed. And I was doing, I did, this was done with Larix Broadcaster. So, uh, yeah. So they, they've been keeping secrets from me again. Secrets, you mean? Play app. Um, and this is an example straight away of uh, video out of a phone straight into broadcast. And depending on whether or, whether or not you've got one of these, uh, the toy phones that the children have, or you've got a proper phone, um, depending on clearly the, the quality of the camera, as, as, uh, as Lewis has already pointed out, quality of the cameras nowadays in phones is pretty damn good. Um, and it's, I don't see it as at all in, uh, incredible. When you consider Steven Soderbergh made a movie on iPhones, um, I don't see it as all, at all uh, unlikely that we, we will start seeing more and more live news being delivered from phones. Um, perhaps monster phones, but still phones. Probably the most not easy to recognize, but powerful feature that we've added in terms of being able to do this in a professional and scalable way is SRT support inside Synergy Root. So Multiviewer and these crazy demos where we make Andrew look slightly mad with camera phones, uh, it gives you the biggest visual, wow, look at that. But in actual fact, being able to register streams inside a management tool, uh, decide whether these streams are visible to people through normal security groups, uh, preview those streams to check they are what you think they are with the integrated previewer, and then using root with virtual destinations where you can uh, effectively change what our existing tools like Multiviewer or like Air are using as what they're attached to for their live input. That is possibly the most powerful aspect of it. Uh, my favorite, I mean, I, I could live uh, as a happy person if, if FR, SRT didn't even manage to work over the internet because of the benefits it brings even on a local area network. The fact that I can now use Synergy Root as long as the sources are SRT on my laptop on, laptop on Wi-Fi. Uh, I can have a multi-view or a client desktop PC just on a single normal gigabit LAN and it can still get video. Where we were demoing over the way over there, previous years we would have had to have set up simulated off-air satellite feeds, we'd have had to have set up more live cameras to try and have sources to work with. But here and over there we keep just using the signals that we've set up in our data center in Nuremberg as a, oh I need a couple of sources, well here's an SD version of this, here's an HD version of this, and here's a shark with a laser beam on its head being sent via webcam from over there to Germany and back. Uh, just having those sources available, it, it's quite a game changer. Yeah. Uh, obviously, SRT is still, it's simultaneously young and old. Uh, I mean, the core components of it, as Andrew said, with UDT is 15 years old. Uh, uh, the you know, significant improvements have been made to it over recent years. You know, it's not yet perfect, uh, but the most crucial thing is it's wide open source, so people can inspect it and improve it. It's managed to pass a very high quality gate in as much as now being integrated directly into VLC and FFmpeg to actually get those guys to accept that stuff into their core product to get actually native reservation of a URL in VLC is not easy. Uh, and to actually have libraries that compile and work on iOS and Android is not easy. And that's all done. Uh, sure, you know, the, 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 there will be improvements made to its continued error correction and, and uh, they have some plans to add some more powerful features, maybe some powerful features that might already exist in, in some competing products. But I don't underestimate the fact that this is widely and freely available. Uh, I mean, what you saw running, what you see running in VLC right there, uh, you know, is often an expensive, often volumetrically priced 
uh, component that maybe you you buy you, you can't generally buy these things outright. You often have uh, you know some of the most painful commercial things to deal with, which is a paper gigabyte type model uh, attached to these things, uh, which, which really does harm the business model a fair amount. Uh, free free at point of use components for this relatively now commodity technology uh, for, for me is incredibly powerful and useful. Yeah. Uh, and I would strongly encourage people, if they, if they think this could ch help change their business and help change the way they work, grab 14 uh, release candidate and put it, into, put it into trial. Don't go just expecting it to be perfect and magic on day one, because there'll be as much learning for you to do as implementers, uh, or more for you to do as implementers as there would be for the protocol to be improved. Uh, but we looked at this a year ago, and we loved it, and it looked like the perfect... Holy Grail, it was just a shame it didn't and, work. Uh, yeah. With the introduction of version 1.3 and some new APIs uh, and the way that we can timestamp the packets properly for us, because we care about timing perhaps more than other people had done, uh, all of a sudden it just came good. Uh, so you know, we, we have not and were not prepared to put it in until we were confident that people could genuinely use it. Uh, that said, I am what's best described as professionally paranoid. Uh, and people, I, people don't even get surefire 100% guarantees that I'm like, you know, going to make it through the end of the day, let alone anything about software, because anything that can go wrong in IT and software will go wrong. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm enthusiastic about this technology, which normally is a positive sign instead of a bit meh. Well, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, it's built directly yeah. on top of the UDT library, yeah. so it was born out of moving files in the way that things like File Catalyst and Signion and so on all similarly charge money for. Uh, there is a mode in the SRT library, and you can get the GitHub stuff, uh, and it will let you use the SRT protocol to do file accelerated modes. I mean, we, we do have a plan. Uh, so the next steps for us with SRT will be in version 14.1 to introduce uh, into root and therefore air some parameters so we can control the latency to increase it or decrease it depending upon the quality of the links and to allow the, the passwords and passphrases for encryption to be in, in, embedded. We've disabled that all at the minute while people get used to this world with 14.0, uh, not least because we also want to embed all these pass keys and passphrases into Synergy root and to make sure whatever we design meshes nicely with SRT Hub. Uh, so we didn't want to make a bit of a mess and then think, gosh, if only we knew how we'd do that right the second time around. Uh, the other part that we want to uh, include in uh, is, uh, what the hell else do we want to include in? I've, uh, I, think, oh, I think it was just parameters and passwords. The bandwidth was a bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that we can, yeah, we, we can see some more in that. So it's, it's a journey that we will continue improving uh, for, for the next 12 months at least. It will be a significant focus. Uh, and you know, I'm looking for an excuse to overhaul Synergy Root as well, and this could be it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we like it. And we think you will too. It's really, it's really interesting. And the commercial, the way it changes the commercials is really important because, uh, you know, as a play-out provider, we're not looking to try and, like, find a way to double the, the price. I mean, much as we'd like to. Uh, we're not looking to use this to find a way to double the air engine's price. Uh, yeah, we see this as a... It's not that complex a problem. I mean, compared to writing encoders uh, uh, or even writing the, you know, the player engine or the branding engines, actually accelerated transfer, it's not that hard. I mean, I could, yeah, you, you could probably sit down over a weekend with enough Red Bull and make a, a half-decent pass these days because it's so well-researched. Uh, the problem that existed was who needs the 27th accelerated transfer protocol in the world? Uh, so what, what I like about SRT is that, you know, there are over 120 people now saying we'll use this one. Uh, and that, you know, beats everything else hands down in that fact alone. Uh, so you, where, you know, where you can use VLC to look at streams from Synergy with cameras contributed from High Vision uh, that then are echoed off to the Wowza Media Cloud. Uh, that, that's the, the, the closing winning move for me. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be there. Uh, and those of you as well that are always interested in seeing, it, it's worth kind of taking a sneaky look every now and again at what we're doing on our demo multi -view. So this has been running for over a year now 
on our homepage, so uh, seconds difference between the embedded clock and there. But we're actually abusing the, the top left corners, the one to see like effectively what kind of crazy is Lewis up to at the minute, because sometimes we leave it parked on a, a stream going around, but uh, if you keep an eye on it, you'll see there's a shark with a laser beam on its head being transmitted from reception over there. So you know, this stuff does just work well enough that we just leave it running on our front homepage all the time. We don't, you know, it, it's me or Mike have to fix it when it breaks. And it didn't go live because we, for the longest time, because we didn't want to have to care or have our boss Skyping us going, oh, it's not working on a Saturday. So now, I mean, we don't touch it ever. I mean, it just sits there for months, months and months and months. The multi are just streaming to the web and with the, the air box in the corner, because they're just on a loop. It's the same, doesn't you? There, there you go. There's my shark with a laser beam on a synergy pad next door. Uh, so, yeah, it, it does weirdly just work. Uh, you just hands off and it's just there. Uh, oh, there's someone looking at my shark, I think. Yeah, there we go, just walking by. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's probably, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done as I'm interfering in Andrew's. And as I say, I've been, been working at Synergy for a fair few years now, and every, every now and again, uh, we get somebody coming, oh yeah, we, we bought it 12 years ago, and uh, uh, in fact, we're in, we're in discussions right now with one of our, literally, one of our very original customers from 90, uh, 2004, wasn't it? HSE, originally, yep. Uh, they bought Synergy in 2004, um, and uh, at the time, the world was a very different place, and now, uh, we're going back to them. They've, they've, they're, they're looking to the, do the next thing. And we've got all sorts of things now that we can offer them. Uh, but the reason they're talking to us in the first place is that what we sold them then has worked for them for the last 15 years. And at the end of the day, other people can come along with, uh, uh, as, the, as they say in Germany, Geld und schöne Worte, with money and nice words. But, uh, um, but we, we have reliability. And that's something I, I think is one of the crucial things about, uh, about our products.